Welcome to Statistics for Surveys Session 1 Basics, Segment 5 Measurement Level, Interval and Ratio. The objective of this segment is to understand the last two types of measurement levels, interval and ratio. We've already discussed in previous segments the terms variables and values, measurement level and nominal and ordinal. The only two new terms this segment will be interval and ratio. Previously, we saw that the variables gender, name and educational program do not have any logical ordering and can therefore be considered nominal. We also saw that the variables Richter, IQ, position, age category, opinion and educational level, they do have a logical ordering. However, the difference between each value is not the same all the time. Therefore, these were considered ordinal. From the remaining ones, the now highlighted in purple temperature and birth year will be considered interval, while the blue ones, temperature and Kelvin, age and income will be considered ratio. I'll try to explain why these are categorized like this on the next few slides. What makes a variable either interval or ratio has to deal with what is known as an arbitrary zero or does it have a natural zero? An arbitrary zero would mean that the zero point of the scale is somewhat chosen at random. So for example, if we take temperature, then with Celsius going to Fahrenheit, you can actually convert that by using Celsius times five over nine plus 32 or the other way around. That's not so relevant for now. What is important is if we look at the difference between five and 10 degrees Celsius, that would be the same as, well, not the same, but in Fahrenheit as the difference between 41 and 50 Fahrenheit. So that's a difference of five. And here we have a difference of nine. Between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius, that's another five. Then also again with Fahrenheit, there's a difference of nine. So that becomes 59. So the interval between two uh, values, no matter if you do it in Celsius or Fahrenheit, is the same. 5 degrees each time in Celsius converts to a difference of 9 in Fahrenheit. However, and this is a big realization, if we say, if we look at the ratios, this is 5 times 2 equals the 10 again, that's not the same in Fahrenheit. 41 times 2 does not equal 50. And you can have another look at, for example, five times four gives you the 20 is not the same as the 41 times four. As you can see here, ratios do not remain the same, but the intervals do remain the same. That's why these are called an interval scale. It happens because Celsius chose the boiling point or actually, well, he chose the boiling point as zero and later we flipped that to be the freezing point of water to be zero, which is rather arbitrary. Zero degrees Celsius does not mean that there is no temperature. This can be done if you use a natural zero. If we say that temperature is how fast molecules move, then if they're standing still, well, we can't go any slower than that. So there's an absence of speed of molecules. This is in basics what Kelvin used as his scale and a rather more uh, unfamiliar Rankine also. Again, I'll show the conversions just for those interested, but that's not the key point here. The key point here is that now with these, again, the difference between five and 10 is of course a difference of five. And if we look here at Rankine, then that's a difference also of uh, nine. 
and if we go from 10 to 15 that's again a difference of 5 and if we go here to 27 that's again a difference of 9 so just as with the interval scale the intervals between two values is the same no matter which scale you convert it to however now if we say well let's look at the ratios so if we say five uh, five times two equals ten then sure also with Rankine that's times two equals eighteen or five times four gives me the twenty and four times nine equals the thirty six so also so-called ratios apply here and that's why this would be called a ratio scale now, because this is a little bit tricky, on the next slide, I'll use another example. As another example, I'll be using the years. Now, in a Gregorian calendar, which most people, I think, use, we can see that the year 500, and if we add another 500, that's a difference of 500 years. And if we would translate that to the Hebrew calendar, then also there we'll see that the difference is also 500. However, if we multiply, so let's say times three gives me the 1500, then that's of course not the same as this one times three. So years can be considered interval. If we look at the euro versus dollar, then depending on the date, uh, the conversion might be slightly different by now. But if we look here, the difference between 10 and 15 euros is uh, 5. So that's uh, a 5 difference. And here we have the difference between 11 and 17, that's 6. And if we move another 5, then here we should be moving another 6 and indeed 17 plus 6 equals 23. Here however if we multiply for example by 2 then also here the e11 times 2 is actually well it should be 22 it shows us 23 but that's a rounding error. Uh, if I would have used more decimals then it would exactly match. So again, with the year, the Gregorian calendar, the year zero was somewhat chosen at random. The, they tried to use the, the date of birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, well, with euro and dollar, zero really means the absence of any currency or money. So that's why the year is interval and money can be considered ratio. As definitions for interval and ratio, I would use that interval, the consecutive values have equal differences, but the zero point does not reflect the absence of something. While for ratio, they also have equal differences and the zero point reflects the absence of something. Because at interval, the difference between two values is always the same, we can add and subtract values that will then have a meaningful interpretation. However, multiplying and dividing will not have a meaningful interpretation, as we saw earlier that ratios at interval level do not actually convert very well. So for only for ratio, we can actually also multiply and divide. We can now classify all of the variables that we've been discussing accordingly. So all the different colors match with all of the different types and here's the full overview of how to categorize uh, each of the different variables that we've discussed.